everyone welcome back to triple r reefer i know it's been a little while seems like that's kind of been my thing here lately with making videos but it has been a little while so i wanted to update y'all and then do a uh <clears throat> i guess a quick how-to on how i add rasses um someone asked to make a video about how you add multiple rasses i may have talked about it before but Hey, I'll touch on anything. That's what she said. All right. <clears throat> so just an update. I did have to cut a few more SPS because I had some more die off. I actually found out that not only my, were my lights messed up, but I had some phosphate issues that I was not aware of, was not being picked up by my phosphate checker. Uh, anyway, bought a new phosphate checker, found out they were high. That's actually what it ended up being. My uh, my nitrates were good. Um, nitrate checker was still good. I run about 10 to 15 on, on nitrates, and I like to stay below 0.1. That's what everyone says. That's where I feel safest. But I have gone up higher than that and never had issues. But uh, until now, and they were like, I don't know, 0.2 something. It was not great. <clears throat> And it was only my SPS that were really struggling. Um, of course, I lost those torches a while back. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it. And I do feel like torches don't like high phosphates, at least in my system. Get this thing out of here. I didn't clean the glass very well. Kind of woke up and was like, hey, let me make a video. Um, so anyway, I fragged a bunch of stuff. Um, some of it I've, did, I've done just because I knew some people wanted some. So I made these little tiny babies. Colors are a little off. The sun new phone. But the dark frags that are, you know, obviously older, been in here a little while, those are all sold. <clears throat> um, so don't be scared to cut small frags. Um, just make your price smaller. I mean, hell, it helps people afford the hobby. You know, if you have higher end sticks, it's to me more reasonable to cut a smaller frag. Let it grow a little bit. Don't cut a little nub and then be like, hey, it's ready. Uh, let it, you know, crust and make sure it's going to survive. But, you know, sell it for cheaper. People will buy it. I had like 10 people want these two guys right here. Um, no use getting the names. But anyway, it's a high end stick. So, look at the growth, even with my ridiculous cutting. Everything's doing well. Everything's growing in. Like, oh yeah, I was growing into you cut it. Man, I don't like these colors too much. But hey, you know what, we'll stick with it. Home Rucker still missing pinks, but the PE is good. Photo bomb. Anyway, I did frag a couple of these guys just to try to promote some growth. Like this one right here, this is a bubble bath unicorn, and the colors on it's supposed to be amazing. When I first got it, I was like, holy crap, this coral's fine. And, uh, Anyway, it's done nothing but start to encrust a little bit. I cut that tip off about two weeks ago, and you can see it's already coming back. But supposedly if you do that, it can help promote growth on some corals. Not all, but some. Clams looking good. Still growing huge. Um, looks like the, the uh, clowns have been loving that. I did, I did buy another torch, and I'm trading for another torch, too. I'm actually trading this... Uh, um, Scully for one, or actually a two head, but anyway, got a Nyx. I don't know, I can't, I just, I love being punished. As soon as I lose this one, I'll swear them off again for a little while and then probably buy some more. Everything's looking pretty good. I did have a few, uh, I had this chalice over here. I don't know, it's, oh uh, yeah, fine, checked out. Okay. I don't know, man. Chalices just don't do that great in my tank. I don't know what it is. But everything else, I mean, Zoa Garden is unreal. 
Um, that's pretty much it. I did put a new uh, a new coil in the other day. When did I get? Oh, oh yeah, the torch. All right, moving on. Um, you can see the tank's doing great. <clears throat> I have uh, been really, really, really. I can't give you another really because I was too many, but really enjoying this filter roller. If you haven't put a filter roller in your system, I cannot recommend that enough. So much better. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to explain until you have one because I'm like, ah, I just changed my filter floss out. No big deal. But my God, is it better. All right, uh, so let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about uh, adding multiple rasses. So what I found is that, and and this kind of really goes for all fish, but is is the more you add, the better. So if you can add more than three, if you can add three or more, that's the best because it spreads aggression. But let's say you need to add one ras to a system that's already established with multiple other rasses. You may not have good luck, okay? This may not work out. Be prepared that it may not work out. You can up your odds. There's ways to do that, but there's a chance that it may not work out. You can do everything right, but there's things you can do if it doesn't work out. All right, so let's go over that. Number one, buy an acclimation box. I think it's critical to put a ras in the acclim or any fish in an acclimation box just to let everybody kind of be like hey who's this let's meet each other again you'll get you'll you'll find out who the aggressor is going to be and you'll give them some time to relax and kind of coast into the tank versus just plop and drop good luck welcome to the hood um so an acclimation box number one is is excellent number two once you find out that you have got an aggressor in your tank you know what's funny is mine is my yellow eye coal tank. I can add any fish in this tank, and that yellow eye coal tank will chase it. Which should be one of the nicer tangs. Powder blue, I don't care about any other fish. Every other fish is just like, what's up? Yellow eye coal tank, chase everybody. Ridiculous. So what I would do is I would have a trap. I would also recommend if you're going to add new fish to your tank, you remove the aggressor. If you can trap the fish, that's going to give you the best odds. If you can't, you need to distract that fish with a mirror or something like that. So, I might have missed that. Door is upside down. All right, so distracting, that's one, that's one way. So the other way that I talked about was, um, was adding multiple rasses. I actually find that to be your most su successful way of keeping multiple rasses because... When you spread that aggression, it lets them relax, and normal aggression is pretty standard in a tank. I mean, I do have a little bit of chasing here and there, but you know, when one is not being pinned up in a corner and three are being chased, it's just better, okay? You're going to up your odds by spreading that aggression. That's how I keep multiple tanks in a smaller system because I spread the aggression. Now, adding another tang in this tank would probably be a nightmare. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Um, it's just going to be too much. They're going to know, hey, anyway, tangs are a little bit different, um, especially when they're more established and a little bit bigger. Some of these guys I'm, I'm about ready to check out, especially uh, my blue tang. She's getting pretty thick. Um, all right, so let's see if there's anything else. Oh, size. So buying a bigger ras um, will also help your odds. If you buy a small one, they might not think of it as a big a big a threat, but his chances of survival are a lot less because he can't really defend himself as well. A big ras can be more emboldened and usually can handle its own. Again, if it's a ras against a powder blue tang, best of luck to you. That ain't going to work out. Uh, let's see what else, if there's anything I'm missing. You can feed more. So a lot of times what they'll what they'll fight about is they think they're not going to get as much food. So if you're feeding, you're distracting them as well. And it sometimes can curb that aggression. 
Uh, the mirror trick does work on rasses, so um, I've personally had rasses just sit there and hang out in this front of this mirror for hours and hours and hours to a point where their mouth was starting to get a little eh, so I ended up removing the mirror. So don't don't stick with that one too long with a rasp because they don't hit it with their tail. They legit come up with their mouth. All right, so I think that's really, if there's anything I'm think, uh, forgetting, I'm sorry, but I feel like that's some pretty good standard ways to introduce multiple rasses and, and keep them from fighting. Um, be specific uh, or be cautious on the on the type you pick. So if, you know if you pick a, a Scots fairy, one of the most aggressive rasses in the in the hobby, and or excuse me, if you pick another ras, say a pintail, which is a very calm ras, and you try to put it and introduce it to a established Scots fairy ras, you're not going to have a good time. It's going to be bad. Okay. Not a lot you can do there because of just how aggressive those rasses are. Again, removing the aggressor is your best. It, that's your best. Uh, the acclimation. Actually, I keep saying the best. All of these, doing all these together is your best. Acclimation box is, is your best friend, though, as far as getting past that first week. Um, you put a ras in there, and, he, and if it's a sand burrowing ras, it dives in the sand probably not going to see that ras again all right everyone i appreciate y'all watching uh, appreciate all my subscribers um I, I didn't hit the thousand that's okay i really didn't put out the content that really earned that much but i'm gonna try to make some more videos i'm um still in love with my tank and just you know life gets in the way sometimes but i uh want to share some more with y'all so I will be doing that. Anyway, I appreciate everyone again. Uh, don't forget to hit like, uh, comment if you want to, and hit that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you all in the next one.